Hey, what's up guys, it's Moog Lord here, and today I wanna to talk about Unicorn Overlord. Now, this is a tactical RPG that I've definitely been looking forward to, and the game will be releasing sometime in April, so I feel as though, let's talk about it for a bit to get you guys hyped, and if you guys have been curious about what this game is all about, or you're looking to get into a strategy RPG, this will be the video for you. So before we dive into this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, for more gaming content here on this channel. I wanna say it time and time again, when it comes to RPGs, especially JRPGs, RPGs break off into so many different subgenres that you can definitely get lost into. And one of my favorite subgenres of the JRPG um, genre happens to be tactical RPGs. I think tactical RPGs is one of those genres that's pretty much overlooked and many people don't really understand the full context or how it's played or people look at it and say hey this may be too much for me because of everything that's involved with it there's so many tactical RPGs that you can pretty much fall in love to because a lot of them actually have a lot of character development lore gameplay mechanics that you can just sink your teeth into but the tactical RPG that made me just fall in love with the genre was Final Fantasy Tactics. Right after I gotten off the hype of Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy Tactics has introduced me to this genre into a whole nother level. And ever since that ever happened, I fell in love, especially with the different class systems that, that the Final Fantasy series have always introduced. But now they put it in more of a chess-like um, strategy type of context. And here we are right now with Unicorn Overlord. Now, when it comes to Unicorn Overlord, this was something that I'm quite like really, really anticipating for the simple fact is it's also pay homage to another strategy RPG that you may not be familiar with. And that's the Ogre Battle series. Now the Ogre Battle series wasn't a tactical RPG to say, it was more of an RTS, a real-time strategy, similar to the most recent Square real-time strategy game that was released uh, not too long ago, and that was called Deal Field Chronicle. I've also have done a review for that as well if you're interested in wanting to know how a real-time strategy works, but you can definitely check that out. But Ogre Battle was a real-time strategy game to where um, which is much different from a tactical system. See, real-time strategy, everything is moving in real time. That's why it's called real-time strategy, where the game doesn't pause itself, and you have to make on-the-fly moves that make these decisions to navigate and move your units around on the field. And we haven't seen something like that from the Ogre Battle series in such a long time. And here it is. We have, we have Vanillaware, a studio that's known for creating games like Olden Sphere, um, the 13 Sentinels, especially with their art style, very unique art style. And now they're pretty much tipping their hat into the tactical uh, or real time um, RPG um, efforts that they have here. And with Unicorn Overlord, it definitely pays homage to games like Ogre Battle, which I really, really fell in love with. And of course, Deal Field Chronicles. So we want to step into some of the context and what to expect. Um, from this game because if you guys don't know as well the game is also going to release on all the platforms we're going to have it on the xbox nintendo switch and the playstation which is also pretty cool that means everybody will have a chance to actually be able to play this game and you better choose the platform of choice to enjoy now nintendo switch fans have best of both worlds because of course you'll be able to dock it and be able to play it on your television and you also better carry this tactical or strategy rpg on the go so i think that's the upside to this um as well so when it comes to this game the game also introduces and like most strategy games um introduces class systems and and this game has over 60 class types which i think is going to be pretty cool so what are the class types that we have known so far we have the arbalists which are pretty much uh long range characters with crossbows and and other type of, of long long range weapons like rifles and then we have clerics clerics is pretty much your healer type class and with a lot of recovery magic and then you have elven fencer elven fencer is pretty much the most versatile of all the classes it will melee based magic attacks and it also lends support to allies to create defensive barriers and then we have the feather bow now, when they come to the Feather Bow, this is pretty much your archer class, but instead of having crossbows, you have a traditional bow with 
also high evasion and they have buff and debuff skills which is also really really good and then of course gladiator gladiator is more of your big physical attack tank like characters that pretty much pose a, a, a pretty much a intimidation to your enemies and it also has affinity for self-healing and then you have house carl now house carl prioritize physical attacks and pretty much have the ability to lower enemies um, physical defense and as a bonus they can follow up with extra attacks at the end of the battle so i think that's pretty cool and then you have shaman shaman um is pretty much there to pretty much make your enemy's life miserable and you can pretty much uh reduce their powers and their abilities to act and having enemies like that you have to deal with especially in a strategy game those are the type of enemies that you really really will have to go after because they will pretty much turn the tide of battle so i think that's pretty cool but this is some of the classes that they do highlight but it's over 60 and i think that's really really cool okay so let's just break down the gameplay for a bit we have three different difficulty levels for players which is tactical casual and expert and i think this is really essential and very important when it comes to this subgenre of rpgs because real-time strategies and of course tactical rpgs are can be extremely difficult especially for newcomers to this type of genre so to have these three different type of levels to get people to actually get into it to understand how the gameplay mechanics work and then they can go from casual to tactical and then when they're ready to really put their skills and strategy to the test and then go to expert i think that's really good and then you have different sets of objectives you have the main quest and your side quest now taking side quests will allow you to take on jobs from various characters along your journey it would also grant you access to a quest list that reveals the quest that you're encountered so the thing about this and i'm starting to see with a lot of jrpgs or just rpgs in general is a quest list i think it's very important because back in the day you didn't have those things you pretty much had to memorize every location remember the npc that you talked to and then go back and forth from one location and backtrack to the other and it was kind of hard to keep tabs of and what i like right now is that quest list has become much more essential and starting to become norms for rpgs no matter what subgenre it is and i like that and also if the quests are quite challenging for you you can also pretty much uh just get out of it leave it alone set it to the side and then once you have the level or you feel as though that you're more confident enough with your strategy you can go back and revisit those quests at any time or any moment that you want and i think that's also really really good and this is also a perfect time for you to recruit new characters and level up your units best thing about it and then of course the main quest pretty much what you would do is you have to lead your liberation army to pretty much free various towns from imperial control along the way so freeing the towns allow access to their shops and other facilities that your army can definitely utilize for future battles so that's pretty much really really essential to this game when traversing the overworld and you encounter many different towns that might be underneath imperial control and then you can also rebuild towns that have been destroyed by the war but by sending the required materials to begin its development and when, once you do that especially when they're large towns and you pretty much rebuild it it also gain give you access to taverns and with these taverns you will be able to have exclusive access to various different meals and these meals can definitely boost your units morale and give them different type of stat buffs which also is pretty awesome and then of course if you want to be able to get these materials or trying to figure out well how can i rebuild this town well you can go out into the overworld and you can encounter many different enemies along the way and by defeating these enemies it allow you to gain access to these various different materials and also you can take the materials or you can go mining in various different spots to get ore and other type of metals um, for material as well to rebuild these towns which i think is also um, pretty awesome overall but the other aspects of the gameplay which they have definitely taken some inspirations from ogre battle is that everything takes place in real time because it's a real-time strategy now 
you have this thing called leader effects. Now leader effects grants various benefits to a unit. The character class of the leader will also determine what effect a unit has. The example, um, you can pretty much have House Carl, who is in the leader position and can use its leader effect to remove obstacles. And I think that's really pretty cool because when you remove these obstacles, it also allows traversal in the map and you can discover various different routes and paths um, as well. And then, of course, there's multiple types of movements, which also determined by the unit leader. So each unit, you have a leader and that leader represents the other units that's within it. And when you come into battle with these enemies, it's kind of like how you would see in Fire Emblem, which is to have the paper rock system mechanics. And that's what you also have here as well. So some characters like you would have infantry or you have uh, the cavalry types, they move up much faster on the roads. Uh, though the ladder is pretty much slower, especially when you go into the forest and flying types can is pretty much what you imagine. You can pretty much fly over, um, type of, uh, areas where, you know, if you were on Calvary or on foot, you wouldn't be able to traverse those. But when you are in the air, you can be able to bypass a lot of, um, things that's, that's pretty much in your way on the land. And then of course, when you level up your class and you get this thing called class promotion, which is definitely a thing in this mechanic where you will pretty much be able to level up your lead character. And once you go from a, uh, for example, um, Island, um, you can start um, with the class Lord and then it pretty much you allow to excel in attacks and defense and can heal as well. But as far as that, he's not strong enough to fight against Calvary opponents. But once you pretty much promote to high Lord, um, Alan gets pretty much a, a, a horse, so he's pretty much like a cavalry, uh, the cavalry in, for some instance here, and it pretty much boosts your attacks and edge over infantry enemies. So that's where the paper rock system um, come into place when it comes to that. And then of course you have auxiliary stages, pretty much or non-story related battlefields to pretty much grind out XP and pretty much earn treasuries to build up your party. And there's also other special items that along the way when you do these nine story battlefield um, related type of quest or just missions in general where you better find special items that pretty much enhance um, your units and also enhance special abilities. So there's a ton of classes, ton of different abilities. And as I said before, there's a lot to sink your teeth into when it comes to this game. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I hope you guys are looking forward to I hope I explained it enough to you guys that this is definitely a real time strategy um, game that I'm definitely going to pick up, especially it's going to release in April and it comes out around the same time as Uden Chronicles, which is another JRPG. I'm looking forward to play um, as well. Now, what console of choice I'm going to pick it up on? I'm definitely going to pick it up on the Xbox Series X. My goal is to try to support as many um, Japanese studios, especially JRPGs as possible for the platform so we can get more of these games um, on the Xbox platform. So I'm definitely going to pick it up for that. I'm definitely, gonna look, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Can't wait to play it. And if this is your first time getting into a strategy RPG, definitely look into it and pick a casual mode so you can get a chance to get the hang of it and to find out if real-time strategy is something for you. But if you wanted to get a taste of what a real-time strategy is, I suggest you go pick up Deal Field Chronicles. I did a review on it. I really enjoyed it. But to really get a taste of what a real-time strategy game possibly is, definitely look into it so this pretty much wraps up this video if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button subscribe button for more gaming content here on this channel this is Mugen Lord signing off i'll see you game fiends later peace out